countdown clock is now at uh, four minutes, as you can see, four minutes and 17 seconds. The weather, uh, astronaut Steve Nagel took a flight around in the shuttle training craft and said that the weather is all right for a launch here in just about four minutes. John, what's it look like there? Well, it looks beautiful right now, Tony. It is clear. Again, there are some puffy clouds that uh, continue to roll in the area, but uh, obviously it is not a concern any longer at the landing strip, and so they are go, and the countdown is proceeding smoothly. There was some concern also about the overseas landing sites earlier, the TAL sites, in case the shuttle had to make an emergency landing overseas. Uh, at, at least two of them were questionable, and one was completely out. So obviously now what we hear is Zaragoza in Spain is the primary landing site in case there should be a need to abort the flight and go overseas. Uh, but that is, uh, that's okay now too. So the weather is cooperating across the world for the Atlantis flight. Tony? Why is it that NASA is concerned when uh, there are clouds, say, in the Kennedy Space Center area? Well, the problem is not with liftoff of the vehicle unless, of course, there was moisture in the clouds over the shuttle's ascent pattern. In that case, you would be concerned of uh, the potential for trigger lightning when the vehicle went through there, actually causing lightning. Uh, there would also be the potential for rain to uh, perhaps damage the shuttle tiles as it ascended. But the primary concern is at the landing site. Clouds below 8,000 feet would make it very difficult for the astronauts to see the landing facility as they were trying to line up for an approach if they had to make an emergency return here to the Kennedy Space Center. One other quick point, Tony. There are more journalists and, and people out here than I can remember in recent times, and of course that's because there is a Belgian astronaut on board, and uh, we some get somewhat jaded by all this uh, here in the United States with doing this so often. But for these people, it, uh, these people, it is a, a great, great event with all the journalists here and uh, all of the uh, dignitaries from, uh, from Belgium. Tony? Quite an international space here. What you're seeing right now is the, the hood vent uh, that takes uh, vapors away from the, the shuttle's external tank is being lifted away. We're counting down. We're just a short, uh, short time away from the launch of the 46th space shuttle flight. This is the 11th flight of the shuttle Atlantis and the first manned flight of what NASA is calling its mission to planet Earth. This is uh, what John was just saying about all of the journalists uh, that have come there because Dirk Fremont, for example, he is the first Belgium astronaut. This is a uh, shot inside the Kennedy Space Center. This is launch control. And as you can see, a good well, shot there of the way the weather looks uh, here for the launch of Atlantis. This will be an eight-day mission, around-the-clock uh, mission by the crew, seven-member crew, six men, one woman. Minute 24 seconds from liftoff here. There are four veterans on this, uh, this crew, three rookies making this flight. As I was saying, they will work round the clock, dividing into two teams, working 12-hour shifts apiece. They will be uh, working with what is called the, the Atlas I payload. It is an atmospheric research payload that fills the, the payload bay, taking readings on the atmosphere. We're about one minute away uh, from launch of the, the shuttle. Let's listen in to the launch control. Around the joints of the solid rocket boosters are being turned off. Residual hydrogen burn igniters have now been armed. They'll be fired at T-minus 10 seconds to burn off any residual hydrogen under the main engine nozzle. Sound suppression water system is being armed. T-minus 35, standing by for the handoff. T-minus 31, the handoff is complete. Onboard Atlantis computers now controlling. Booster hydraulic units have been started, and a final steering check of the engine nozzles is underway. T-minus 20. Body flap and speed brake in the launch condition. Sound suppression water system activated. T minus 10, 9, 8, we're go for main engine start. 6, 5, main engine start. 3, 2, 1, and liftoff of the space shuttle Atlantis on a mission to planet Earth. Houston Atlantis, in the roll. Roger, roll, Atlantis. Houston now controlling. Atlantis is rolling to the proper up sound down position for its climb to a 57 degree inclination, 160 nautical mile high orbit. Three engines now throttling down as Atlantis prepares to pass the air of maximum aerodynamic pressure. 
Atlanta speed now 500 miles an hour, downrange one nautical mile, altitude 13,600 feet. One minute since liftoff, altitude now 33,000 feet, downrange three nautical miles, Atlantis now traveling 1,023 miles an hour. Atlantis Houston, go with throttle up. Roger, John, go with throttle up. Three engines now throttled back up to 104% of rated capacity and operating well. Good hydraulic systems, good electrical systems, altitude 68,000 feet, downrange eight nautical miles. Atlantis now traveling 1,705 miles an hour. One minute, 50 seconds since liftoff. Atlantis now traveling 2,386 miles an hour. Flight controller standing by for burnout and separation of the solid rocket motors. Atlantis, two engine Zaragoza. That uh, call, two engine Zaragoza, means if a problem should develop, uh, the shuttle could get to one of its alternate uh, landing sites with only two of its engines. It currently has uh, three engines up and running. Atlantis' first stage performance with the solid rockets was as planned, and Atlantis could now perform a landing at Zaragoza, Spain on only two engines if that would become necessary. However, three engines still operating well at 104%. Altitude 225,000 feet, downrange 54 nautical miles, Atlantis traveling 3,400 miles an hour. Time since liftoff, three minutes. What you saw fall away were the solid rocket boosters. They uh, expended all of their fuel, and, and now the, uh, the shuttle is going uh, on its, its external tank, and its, its three uh, engines going strong. The shuttle Atlantis will go up to 180. 60 nautical mile orbit shortly after the astronauts get in orbit, astronaut Kathy Sullivan, who is the uh, commander in charge of the payload in this case, she will turn on the equipment in the payload bay, the Atlas I payload, uh, the various... Three engines uh, continuing to operate well at 104%, good hydraulic systems, good electrical systems, altitude 300,000 feet, downrange 98 nautical miles, Atlantis now traveling 4,430 miles an hour. She will turn on the equipment that measures various components of the atmosphere. And then around noon Eastern time, uh, they will begin taking some of their uh, first the measurements in this, which will be a, an eight-day mission. In fact, one of the things NASA is hoping is that if supplies, uh, what they call consumables, uh, various uh, supplies, uh, other not, not food, but uh, electrical power, oxygen, and, and the rest, are uh, available, and they would like to extend this to uh, a nine-day mission. We copy, John. Press to ATO and negative return. That negative return... Those indicate that Atlantis has gained too much altitude and is traveling too fast to return to the Kennedy Space Center if that were to become necessary, and also that Atlantis could press to a lower than planned but safe orbit on only two engines if that were to become necessary. However, all three engines continue to operate well at 104%. Good hydraulic systems, good electrical system. That's, a, now, that's James Hartsfield, a uh, spokesman from the uh, Johnson Space Center, explaining what's happening. Now, there are seven astronauts on board, six men, uh, one woman, Kathy Sullivan, the, uh, the one woman astronaut. Four of them are veterans of the shuttle program, three, uh, three rookies. This is uh, an international mission. One of the astronauts, Dirk Fremont, is from Belgium. He is a member of the European Space Agency. He was selected on this flight when a, uh, another astronaut who had been previously selected for this mission was unable to go because of illness. As I say, shortly after the crew gets into orbit, uh, Kathy Sullivan will start powering up the Atlas I equipment, and then around noon Eastern time, they'll begin taking some of their first readings. And of course, throughout this eight-day mission, CNN will be monitoring it and bring you up to date as things occur.